We've never been a very controversial brand here at Sunday Sounds, but this time I think we may have actually gone too far by accident. We released a video on Nord keyboards for churches, and it may have been a huge mistake. It's red for all the demons they harbor. It looks like a Nord keyboard may be more of a flex than anything else. Of course, where the Nord is, the Lord is. Especially appreciated the biblical study of Nord's influence in the Bible. Our stage two is nothing but an expensive MIDI controller. Been there. Great realistic sounds, the best organ emulation, all we need. The Lord loves the drip of red piano. A few years ago it was motifs, now we are living Nord's time. Nord is nice because it's red. Nord fans are like Apple and their user base. Whether it's Nord or not, what's important is that you have the Lord. Most American recommendation in a long time. As others have said, it's the Apple of keyboards. It absolutely kills me when churches spend $5,000 just for their little old church pianist to say, just give me a piano sound. $5,000 for gear used by volunteers. No one has ever stormed angrily out of a church because there wasn't a Nord on stage. My help comes from the Nord. A $6,000 Nord is a lot more budget friendly than a $30,000 organ. This might be my favorite, how to talk about something without saying nothing. Why does he keep calling paid musicians volunteers? Is it because the idea of a musician demanding payment for their skill is somewhat shame associated? It's not really about Nords, but it's an interesting comment. It simply means these churches have lots of money. Nord is overrated. There is no standard for worship instruments. Who set those standards? It is not biblical at all. Did you watch the video? Contemporary worship rock is the worst genre ever. They're for hipsters. We had this one crazy comment thread that ended up with over 80 comments. Nord is the apple of keyboards. It's a perception thing. Hate away, casual. I don't hate love Nord for their organs. Nord is the standard in the industry. That's fact, everything else is just your opinion. I hear you, sir, esteemed director of the Standards Bureau. I'm just here to teach the casuals. Don't get mad at how the industry works since they don't cater to your little boards. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's a cute and convenient approach for folks that don't have the budget. Yikes. So clearly we struck a nerve with this video, which is one I guess we didn't really intend to strike. The goal was to put forth some interesting questions. Why are so many churches using Nords? And present, you know, a relatively down the middle approach of pros and cons and kind of some musings on why that might be. But there were clearly two very strong and opinionated camps in the comments of folks who are very much pro-Nord and folks who are pretty polar opposite, directly opposed to the idea of Nord. Almost it felt like on a moral level. And this was really interesting to see play out. Again, the intent of the video was to just kind of start a conversation and not necessarily a fight in the comments. But I mean, you know, most everybody was just sharing their opinions. I think it ended up being just fine, but there were some really thought provoking comments too and some interesting discussion points. So I wanna talk about a couple of them. This is one of the top liked comments. It said, 99% of worship musicians using Nords either just use the piano patch or use it as a MIDI controller. Either way is a waste of church or personal funds. This was a really popular comment. Lots of folks seemed to agree with it. This idea that you're underutilizing the Nord. And this is one of the things we did talk about in the video in the first place, was we found that a lot of churches that invested finances in Nords ended up finding that they didn't really utilize them to their full potential. So one of the encouragements was, hey, Spend some time digging into the keyboard you already have if you have a Nord and figure out how to coax more out of it, how to put a system in place so that your volunteers can feel more comfortable and confident with the equipment. Now, I, I have actually used a Nord as a MIDI controller many times because I've showed up at a church or an event and they've had a Nord on stage because lots of churches have them. And in those cases, I don't feel bad about using my iPad with the Sunday Keys app and just letting the Nord be a MIDI controller because then I can practice, prepare from home or anywhere else, show up, plug in and be ready to go. But if I were in the market to purchase a keyboard for my own setup or for a church that I was a part of, and I knew I was gonna go with the software approach, I don't think I would look to a Nord first because I would be underutilizing it. Another comment we got was on the amount of storage, like the storage space inside of Nords themselves. Now each successive Nord stage model has added more storage, but they've also added more in-depth sampled instruments, which take up more space. This comment said, we have a Nord stage two and the storage space on the piano has been a huge limiter for how good and dynamic sounds we can use. 
The grand piano patch you talked about takes half of the entire storage. Both Roland and Yamaha make stage pianos, and we got a Yamaha YC88 in addition to the Nord, and it has blown our minds on how good it is, especially that it is half the price of the Nord. We got lots of brand love for other big players in the game in the comments, especially tons of Roland and Yamaha. We got some mentions for Korg as well, but lots of folks recommending Roland and Yamaha workstations that they felt were comparable or often superior to the Nord. And the conversation that was interesting to me was they weren't just talking about the price, although it was often this sort of thing like the Roland is half the price, this Yamaha is half the price. The thing that surprised me was it sounds just as good, or in some cases it sounds better, or it makes more sense for my workflow. So there definitely was this camp of folks who were like, there are other more compelling hardware options out there. But I did also see in the comments, lots of folks who were like, the Nord is fully integrated into my rig. I'm really comfortable. I'm really confident with it. And they had nuanced things that they valued about the Nord. It wasn't all just, I use the piano. Folks specifically mentioned the organ emulation time and time again. They mentioned the flexibility. Folks mentioned the quality of the effects. And I do love the effects section of the Nord and how easy it is to sort of just turn that gluey compressor up or add a touch of reverb. I think that part of the Nord is really pretty user friendly and it's simple to just have that one knob, that compression that just makes everything feel a bit more glued together. So the folks that were Team Nord were definitely actually investing more time into their instrument, into getting comfortable with everything that their keyboard can do. And the folks that were Team Roland or Team Yamaha were not just emphasizing budget friendliness, but also they were putting forth they could get just as good or better sounding results and sometimes workflow improvements as well. The last thing that I thought was really interesting was just how varied people people's opinions were on the key bed. We had people saying that the key bed felt incredible and that their favorite thing about the Nords were how good they felt to play. Like the key bed itself was really beautiful and responsive. And then we had on the exact opposite end, people talking about just how terrible those key beds were and how all of the other manufacturers had superior key beds and it was just cheap trash. I didn't expect there to be this much of a divide between folks on how the keyboard itself felt. I, I've played Nords, I've played stage twos, played stage threes, I've played stage fours, and I think the keybed feels pretty good. And I hadn't heard tons of critique from that from musicians I've met in person. So it was really interesting to see just how divisive the keybed itself was. And it really just brought to mind for me how those things are never gonna not be subjective, almost entirely subjective, right? Because one person's light touch is another person's way too heavy touch. Everybody has a different preference and it's informed by what they're used to, their own playing style, the weight with which they play and how dynamic of a player they are. It's interesting to me to think about the Nord key bed as being a deciding factor when so many folks focus on the quality of the samples and so many detractors focus on the stated clunkiness of the workflows and those sorts of things and especially emphasize emphasizing the price to value. Thinking about the physical hardware, the mechanics and the ergonomics of the key bed was a perspective I hadn't given as much thought and I definitely will now when I revisit this conversation. If you haven't watched the original video yet, we'll put a link in the description. You can check that one out. I'm sure there's still tons that we've missed and that you'd like to discuss further. So leave a comment and let us know what you think about this video. Is there anything that we still need to talk about? Any opinions that we haven't touched on? The goal really here is to just help churches make more informed decisions with either their church budgets or with the volunteers and their personal budgets so that if a Nord is right for you, you feel confident about that decision and you feel good about that expense. And if a Nord isn't for you, you avoid making a decision that you might eventually end up regretting.